Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Natalie, N-A-T-A-L-E-E. -E. You can also follow me on Instagram if you so desire. I have been called upon to do a special reading, sort of like a love intimate reading. The Scorpio full moon is tomorrow and I feel completely normal. I feel completely, you know, nothing dramatic at all. I feel completely... I mean tired. I'm tired, but just feeling very amorous, like very amorous. Not sure if that's just me though. So I just, I'm uploading right now the weekend reading for, for just the general. So I kind of want to see what's up doing like a little energy check for, you know, like special love, intimate, sexual energies right now. Cause that's really all that I'm feeling. That's the only thing that I'm, I'm not feeling any like death, transformation, awakening, rebirth, scorpionic, skeletons tumbling out of the closet type stuff. I'm not really, I already went through all that. So, I mean, I don't know. So all I'm feeling is like the sexy part of like the Scorpio energy. So that's what I'm going to go with. And then, yeah, then the weekend reading, I just didn't pick up anything. I picked up like work stuff. I have all of my fluids here with me, so. I picked up like work, work related things. So, you know, I just go with it. I don't ask, I don't question the, I don't question. So, okay, here's where, let's just jump right into it. I'm going to do a little bit of shuffling and then I will pull some cards and then I will move along to the next deck as I am guided to, as I get more of the story. And that's really what this is about, is about getting like the context getting the story, getting the characters, getting the situation and the energies and really just getting into the nitty gritty of it. I had this dream last night that it was like a regular dream and I can always tell when it switches, when it moves forward to a part that's more, I can feel it, the difference between when my dream is like a subconscious garbage coming up and then when it's astral traveling and like lucid dreaming and, um, you know, different. I can feel it. And last night it was like a regular, normal, you know, maybe I ate whatever before bed and it was influencing, you know, it was like that. And then it changed. And someone, I had taken off my clothes and I was about to take a shower and then someone just pushed me in the shower. Like, and then I was like, you know, like, <laughs> I just didn't, I just, I just like, and I was like under the water and like, I don't like that. Like I am, I, I need to like mentally prepare for a shower, which is funny because I love to groom. Like I love grooming myself, but yeah. And I, right as I went into the water in the shower, I woke up really harsh, like fast and alert and just, and the moment that I woke up, that I knew that I was waking up, I got the, I got a message and it was, um, it was, the message was that it was, it, it, things get communicated to me all in one instant. Like it's a feeling, an image, a sound, words, it's everything all at once, okay? It's a one big, it's like downloading a movie in a, in a blink of an eye in an album blink. So it was, so I explained this long message, but it really just happened in an instant, like right upon awakening. And the message was that, that's what it'll that's that's the sensation that's that's what it is or what it will be like something will be like completely thrust into something shocking new different you know whatever but i don't have any more information than that and it was just like i said that one moment this morning so four minutes in natalie okay now the reading begins so i didn't tell anyone i didn't say that dream when i was doing the weekend reading First card. Oh. Hope you're doing your squats, ladies. Somebody watching your ass. Ooh, someone looking at it. Someone looking at that ass. Looking at that ass. Uh-huh. Mm-mm. What do I always say, guys? Spy Scorpio card. Mm -mm. Someone is spying on you. Ooh, oh, creepy. Doesn't have to be a script, but someone's watching you. 
This is telling me, and it doesn't have to just be for singles. I mean, it's for singles, but it doesn't have to be like, they know who you are because if, how can someone watch you if they don't know who you are? So if it's, the bus boy at your favorite restaurant, if it's Starbucks girl, if it's someone, someone at work, someone in the family friend circle, someone, a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend, whatever it is, they're watching you. And I do feel it is that they're watching you. My God. <sighs> Scorpio full moon. So the full moon in Scorpio. Oh my God. I couldn't even finish what I was going to say. What is this card? Hold on. Oh my God. I'm going to get up now. Hold on. I don't want to though. Okay. I found it. Okay. Oh, the judgment card. Okay. Okay. Is my mic still plugged in? Can you still hear me? Hold on. Okay, so if you couldn't before, you can now. Something's coming back to life. This could be, I don't know if it's an old relationship. I don't know if I'd go that far, everybody. But do you see how they're rising from their coffins? They've heard the trumpet sound of Gabriel. I don't know if it's Raphael or Gabriel. I always forget to look it up, sorry. But there is something significant about the trumpet. And see these little lines? There's something significant, significant about sound the sound of someone's voice or the sound of music you know what song i have in my head i cannot get the song out of my head out of the tree of life i just pick me a plum you came along and everything started in a hum i don't know i just have that song like in my head like the past like a week or so. Anyway, so something about sound has awakened something, awakened somebody, awakened something inside of somebody. And they're like, <laughs> do you like how I did that? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, but for real. Someone's coming out of the coffin of something. Someone's coming back to life. Someone's coming, being resurrected. There's a resurrection happening, which is interesting because the weekend reading talked about awakening the awakening, some big awakening. So here's a resurrection going on. And someone's made a decision about something. Someone's made a life, a big life decision about something. And it has reawakened something in them. It has resurrected something in them. And it's divine. It's, there's something divine about it. There's something like, I don't know if it's preordained. I don't know what, but... Someone's coming back to life in a big way, romantically, because this is a romantic reading. Ooh. I'm just going to, I don't read reversed unless I really feel like, and this came out reversed. Upright. And this came up in the last reading for, um, for the weekend, the general. Upright. It's. No, thank you. No, thank you. It's a rejection of something or you don't see it right in front of you. Reverse, the opposite is true. Reverse, it means someone does see something right in front of them. They do take an offer. They do take a cup. They do walk forward into something. So what I'm thinking is that someone did not take a cup that was offered to them and now they do. And now they see it for what it is and they go for it. It's weird. It could be a past relationship. A couple more cards, then we'll move on to the next, um, to the Lover's Path Tarot deck. They take it now. They've taken it now. They want that cup now. So I'm telling you, do them damn squats because somebody watching you. Hey, somebody watching you. Oh, dear God. Why are they on the floor? Come on, guys. Ugh. You are someone's wish come true. You are someone's wish come true. You are someone's deepest desire. You are someone's, and you know what? 
hold on now. This came out with this card too, and I have to address it. This is usually the Seven of Swords is like the fuckery card. It's deceptive. It's getting away with something. Getting away with the fuckery, getting away with doing something, getting away with fucking some shit up. However, number one, it came out with the star card. And the star card, it like purifies everything it touches. It just makes everything so much better and so much more pure. So coming out with this card is telling me, along with this Page of Swords card, is that someone is kind of, they're watching you. They love you. They fucking love you. They are, you're like fruit. You're not like candy. You're not like chew you up, spit you out. You're, you're pure fruit. You're nourishment. You give them life. You resurrected them in their heart. You cause something to come up from their heart and just start to grow your love who you are is inspiring them. You, you woke them up in a way that they just were not woken up yet. They, you were the sound. You were the sound and they are coming out of their coffin to meet you. Now, right now they're just watching your ass. So, okay, but getting back to this. So now the waters are subconscious and the land is conscious mind. So she has these two jugs of water, one foot in the subconscious, one on land. All these stars with these points, they denote that she's like completely in tune with the macrocosm and the microcosm and the cosmic consciousness. She divinates it from above and, 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 and is that manifested. Does that make any sense? She's taking, okay, so the magician card, he has his hand up and he has the, the tool and that's bringing you know, out from the ethers, energy into manifestation. She does that, but through her life and through her personality and through who she actually is, okay? So that's why she's inspiring this person. That's why you're inspiring someone by just being exactly who you are and doing your thing. Okay, now back to the fuckery card. So, this seven of swords with the page of swords, it's words, it's right? The, sev the swords are words. So I'm thinking that they're probably... Now remember, we don't make any judgments. So if someone's being deceptive, we're not going to make a judgment on if that's good or bad yet. Because right now, I'm showing two major arcana cards that are really big deals, that are really positive. So I'm thinking, and if they're watching you, I'm thinking that they're... It's like they're hiding who they are or... They might be hiding, they might be concealing themselves watching you from afar, okay? So it's not like they're getting away with something. It's also that they're using street smarts. Thank you. Like common sense street smarts. So they're watching you from afar and they're just spying on you because it makes sense right now. It makes sense for them to watch you from afar. It's, um, oh shoot, sorry. Um... Yeah, it just makes sense right now for them to watch you from afar. It's like street smart. It's like a, it's just, it's not like personal or anything because they're absolutely infatuated with you. Absolutely infatuated with you. I'm trying to get, okay, let's just do like a, like maybe one more card before we move on because can we get some clarification on... how these people know each other or anything more specific on Jesus. Hold on. What's this? This person is very serious about you. Okay. They're just going to ignore me. They're just going to, this is, I got this. Okay. Got it. They're just going to, I can't even ask any more questions. I'm just supposed to shuffle. And then the cards that pop out is the messages. So I'm, I'm okay. I learned lesson learned. I got it. Got it. Everybody. So they're very serious about you. They want to like make you a husband, make you a wife, make you like in their life in a very serious way. You're very, very serious to them. The Hierophant. See, we have these two pillars of justice in the background again. And the fact that the Hierophant holds up the, the hand 
it's like they're blessing you. They're, it's like you are blessed. It's like this union is blessed. This union is protected. This union is ordained by destiny or the universe or something. But there's something very serious about this person's interest in you. Like this is not fuckboy. This is not that, okay? This is someone who wants to legally make you their, their counterpart. See these cross keys below? And they do this because it, it's right to them. It's right. This is the correct thing to do. This is, this, is, this is right. This is morally right. This is ethically right. This is correct according to their own standards and morals and what they think you deserve and what they want for their life and how they want to go about this whole thing. It's like, right, it's correct. I'm telling you, it's got this very serious thing about it. Okay, bottom of the deck card, then we're moving on. <gasps> Ooh, they're not going to let you go. This is someone who's holding on or can't let go. Greed, okay? They, are, they want to physically hold on to you. They want to fit there. Once they get a hold of you, they're not letting go. Oh my God. This is very like Taurian. Oh, it's even Scorpio energy. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Damn. It's very serious. They're very serious about. Sorry. I don't know why my phone just. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so yeah, they're very, very serious about this. They're very serious about, <sighs> God. that's why they want to legally marry you. They don't want to let you go. They want to lock it down. Mm. Mm. Whoa, guys. Wow, you inspire some very deep feelings in somebody. That's pretty cool. Okay, moving on to the next deck. This is a Lover's Path Tarot deck. It's very beautiful. The Major Arcana are all made up of famous lovers throughout all of history and story and time and everything it's very very romantic and then all of the suits are different like stages and scenes from those romantic stories i mean tristan and isolde isis and osiris cleopatra and caesar oh. The greatest love stories of all time. Yeah, that's really all that I'm feeling about the Scorpio full moon stuff is just like very amorous. This song came on the radio and I was like feeling things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it to it. So we have now the context from the original Rider Waite tarot deck. We have the context of the situation. They're absolutely in love with you. And you might not have met them yet because they're watching you. And they see you for who you are and they see you for your value. They like, they see you now that reverse. I don't, that's the first reverse I got all year. This reverse card. I haven't had a card come out reverse like that with that feel with all of that in like a year, at least that's pretty incredible. That's a very strong message. That's a very strong message. And it came up in the last reading upright and it's come up in readings, but very interesting. In the upright in the general, it was because in the past someone didn't see someone. Someone didn't see, um, ooh, sorry. Someone didn't see a viable opportunity in someone. And, and, and in this romantic reading, it's, it's like the message is very clear that, that someone is seeing someone for, for who they are, what they are now. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. Off the table again. Hold on. Stand by. Yeah, let me just do all kinds of acrobatics here. <sighs> Sorry. 
the queen of coins, the queen of pentacles. Yay. Some of my Capricorn empress sisters are going to go and like get married. <laughs> no, but for real. So the queen of coins, Hera. Oh my God. The queen of coins is the woman who is completely in time, in tune, in she's on time and in time. She's completely tuned in to her own cycles, her own natural cycles of life, of love, of work, of a harvest, of investing, of diversify, everything. She is like in tune with it materially too. She knows, um, she just has an instinct about material things as well of what's going to like multiply into a lot of money and what's best to, to needs more time to develop what you know just i mean that's her that's why she shows up as an earth sign very capricorn taurus virgo fertility prosperity beauty generosity Creating prosperity and harmony. Everything I just said. Fertility. Possibly parenthood. Loyalty. Warmth and affection. Love. So major love. And, you know, the Empress is all of the queens forged into one. Like one Excalibur queen. So this is being emphasized. This queen of pentacles is just being emphasized. So it could be Capricorn. Or it could just be someone with this heavy energetic signature. Okay. So I don't like when people get really locked up about... Oh, it's this card, so it's got to be this sign. Okay, I don't, and it's not me. So, Queen of Coins does not have to be Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo. I've just, let's just get that out there, okay? But someone who's just like embodying this energy, this fecundity, this fertility, this like prosperity, okay? I just like that voice I did. <laughs> People hate when I do voices. Like if I'm if I'm just joking around and I impersonate them, they don't like the way I make them sound. <laughs> I'm hilarious and they just can't appreciate it. It's okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Ooh, the three of coins. Ooh. In the traditional tarot deck, the three of coins is, and I'm surprised that, I was surprised, I was going to say it too, but I didn't. I was surprised in the general reading for this weekend that the three of coins did not show up because the three of coins is collaboration. It's working together. It's the one where the two monks commissioned this artist to design an archway. And the archway is like one, two, three pentacles. And they're like just kind of talking about it. And I was like, wow, that's interesting that it didn't come up you know, in that reading, because that reading was so strongly about, about work. So because it's showing up here, this could be work-related romance. Just saying, be very careful with that. Be very careful. Someone obsessed with you, though. Someone is absolutely obsessed with you. They're, like, watching you. And they're, <laughs> it's like they're plotting to get your life. They snow, snow, soul snatching, snow. Set. Oh my God, I can't believe I just said snow. Snow, blah, 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 blah. Soul snatcher. Soul, so they want to snatch your soul. They want to snatch your life. I'm serious. This, These two cards like together like this is so possessive. It's so possessive. It's so serious about holding on tight to somebody, you know? <gasps> anyway, so the three of coins is work. It's work-related situations. It's collaborations. It's it's someone commissioning someone else. It's someone hiring someone else. It's someone joining a new corporation, joining a company, joining a project, joining, you know, but you're adding your talent. Someone's adding their talent to something. So when you get hired by a company, they're hiring your expertise, your history, your background, your you know, your contribution in any job. So that's what this is. It's like very clear. And it's material. It's the coin card. Coin cards are like things you can knock on and actually touch with your hands. So this is another another coin card. Wow, the three and the four of coins and the queen of coins. Very interesting. So yeah, this could be work-related. 
You could meet someone at work. If this is similar, if this has anything to do with the last reading, then it's something to do with that offer. Watch that other video. Watch the uh, the weekend, um, the weekend Lord of Victory. I called it the Lord of Victory. Watch that video. If that resonates, then this is a this could be a counterpart to that. We'll see how this story. <laughs> we'll see how the story envelops. I mean, develops. Excuse me. <laughs> wow the seven of coins oh i didn't even do the thing oh my gosh hold on the seven of coins traditionally is waiting like waiting for something to bear fruit but i didn't even read you the three of coins building manifestation construction building of career relationships or home the ability to manifest material goods or business success cooperating with others to construct such a venture see there is see that's like really what I said someone is looking to like build something with someone and it's but it's like love too it's like falling in love on the job falling in love with a job applicant you know you see them on LinkedIn and you're like oh my god they're perfect for me <laughs> okay maybe you don't say it like that whatever and then now we have the seven of coins wow another coin card patience expectations nurturing waiting for a harvest of a creative project personal relationship or any venture that time and work is invested in tending your garden wow so someone's waiting this could be the queen of coins this could be the feminine this could be or you know whoever whoever's on the other end of all this so someone's watching right that page of swords and kind of being maybe not deceptive maybe just using common sense to keep themselves like kind of hidden for whatever reason which we just go with you know i don't see anything really malefic 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 potato potato tomato tomato let's call the whole thing off I don't know, whatever. So it's, yeah, well, there's no bad judgment on that, but someone's waiting. It's either the person, it's one side or another because there's there's two characters here. Do you see this? There's the Hierophant who's super like watching and waiting and like keeping themselves very hidden and secret who's made a judgment about this and has heard the call and who's completely inspired by somebody else. The other person is like the star, their star. They don't have to be a star on like the world stage, but to this, per what's that saying? To the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you could be the world. That's who she is. That's who the star card is. So this could be her. This could be her and it could be work like, like some, who's waiting? now I don't know because the queen of coins isn't waiting <laughs> the queen of coins ain't waiting for nobody I don't know what to tell you I don't know I mean we're the feminine's not really waiting I mean so, I get okay fine someone's waiting I you you decide who that is okay you decide who that is one more card see I want to ask like well, how do they get together? When do they get together? But I already have like my my answer is that Natalie, do your job and just shuffle the damn cards and then just see what pops out. That's why I want Oracle cards to get like specifics, you know, time periods and, you know, clearer messages about logistical specifics because I feel like it'd be really helpful. See, look, now they're not even telling me anything. Now they're super mad at me for saying all that. Are we done with this deck? Is that what you're saying? They're done. See? Sorry, guys. I looked at the bottom of the deck because I'm such a brat. And we got fortune. Come on, fortune. Do you see it? There we go. Danae and Zeus. See what that says, key 10. See, they don't want to give me a card and I just took one anyway. 
fortune. This is the Wheel of Fortune card in the other deck. Positive fate, the generosity of the universe, the ability to be open to abundance, awareness of beauty and love. Awareness of abundance. Awareness of beauty and love. The generosity of the universe, positive faith, the ability to be open to abundance. Wow. Someone's wheel of fortune is turning. <sighs> or someone's waiting for their wheel of fortune to turn in their favor. Interesting. Okay, now we're going to move on. Okay, I heard you. Okay. Now we're moving on. And if you don't like nudity and fun stuff, then you can just cut the reading off here. Exit the reading. It's totally okay. Won't hold it against you. But the rest of us like to get down and dirty, so... That's what we're going to do. And this is really like the predominant energy that I've been feeling like since yesterday, yesterday and today. I just feel very amorous. Oh my God, the song. Okay, I'm going to talk about the song now. Shuffle a little bit, get them real nice and mis mixed up and then, and then shuffle and then pull the cards. But the song that came on, I think yesterday or the day before, it's a popular song. It's, um, remember, I'm not a singer. Like the very first time Feels like the very first time That song And it was just like I don't know, like I just started I don't know, it just really like affected me It was so weird There was another song, I can't remember it right now But it was just It just made me think and feel things about About a reawakening, about how because that's what the song's about, you know, things, you know, maybe you've had sex a jillion times, a bajillion, a billion times before, but then you have sex with someone and then it feels like it's a, it's so new and different and whatever that it just feels like the very, like the song says, it feels like the very first time. So, okay, let's see what we have. This is the Tarot of Sexual Magic deck. This is if you too... see what they have to say. Ooh, another queen, the queen of swords. Ooh, this woman. Ooh, okay. So the feminine in this, in this like love story, this little scenario, she ain't moving from her throne. I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you that right now. It is not the feminine that is waiting for her wheel of fortune to turn. She is sitting pretty on her throne, happy as a clam. She, um, yeah, someone else is going to have to come to her throne and ask for permission. In the traditional tarot deck, in the traditional Rider Waite, the image is of this woman, the queen on the throne, with her arm up, signifying you may approach. You may approach. Like that. Just like that. You may approach. You may ask. And that's what she is. Look at her. She is not moving. She is not moving from her throne. Someone else is going to have to approach her. Okay, let's see what they say. I just got these cards not too long ago and I had, I got them all at once, so I can't like download all the cards at once. Okay, let's see. So I'm still kind of working my way through them. Solitude is not death. An undesired partner must be sent away, even at the cost of breaking your own heart. Ooh, see, she's not moving off her throne and she's not accepting anything below her standards. She will turn anyone away. You know, in my romantic past, I've always felt really confident because I could say no. And it's like I had so much more power saying no than I had of saying like yes to everything or yes to anything. I always felt like my ability to like leave any room, walk out of any building, walk away from anything, anyone was the most powerful thing. I loved to do it too. I was very queen of swords, but like the lower expression where 
It's like cut off his head, ask questions later to walk away, be cold, 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 cruel, cold. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a higher vibration now, but back then it was like, I, I mean, I would walk away from anything. And I mean, I could still do that. I could still walk away from anything, but it's used a lot more responsibly now where, you know, I can walk away from anything beneath my standards. And that's what this is. This woman can walk away and turn down any offer that is beneath her standards. So it's got to be perfect. It's got to be, it's got to be perfect. It has to, it ha she has to, des like, it's got to be what is deserving of, to would you offer, you would not offer this woman anything less than complete respect and integrity and security and like I mean everything has to be completely legitimate everything has to be completely legit look at her look at her she's all alone in a room staring at a picture of a man even if she wants him even if her fucking pussy throbs for this motherfucker, she will turn him down. Ooh. 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 Even if she is sitting there in her throne in her wet panties, she will say no. Wet panties and all. No. She would rather sit up in her little dark room with her little black candle fanning her pussy, staring at a goddamn motherfucker in a painting rather than be in that relationship with this low vibrational motherfucker and be unhappy and be less than what she deserves. And she, she know it. She could not bear to be in a relationship that is less than her standards and be conscious of it at the same time. She just can't do it. Okay, when you reach a certain level of awakening and of high vibrational frequencies and you know, you've been through enough shit, you've been dragged through the ringer, you just can't anymore. You just cannot go backwards. Okay, what do I always say? I always say that I paid for my lessons and I don't pay twice. I'm not going to pay twice for the same goddamn thing. Mm -mm. And neither does she. Ooh, she's serious. Damn. And like, it don't matter if your dick is perfect. It don't matter to her. She will not entertain you. You know, it doesn't make me look very flattering, but in the past I would be, people would try to court me with like their mansions and, you know, a little bit of fame or something. And they would like look at my face and I just kind of, Who are you? That's what I wanted to know. Like nothing was like, you know, I didn't, and they kind of didn't like that, but they kind of did. Like the, the really world famous person actually loved that I did not react at all to his, um, his fame. And this is like, I'm telling you this because we're like close, because you feel connected to me and I feel connected to you. So let's, this is not like, let's all talk about this. And if you ask me questions about it, I'm not going to answer because I'm extremely private. I'm telling you the story. I tell you my stories because it backs up the cards and I want you to understand the concept of the cards. This might be a two hour one. Um, and, and the point of that is that he knew, I mean, I'm talking this, this man had a very brief, liaison with him okay world famous like world stage everyone all across the world knew this person and just had incredibly strong reactions to him okay and guess who i was i was the queen of fucking swords and the sexual tarot deck of sexual magic and he knew that i wouldn't accept crumbs he knew that and he loved it he really loved it and he really liked it. Okay, so that's somebody in this situation here. That's someone in this situation. It might be the inspiration person, the person that's inspiring the other person. I feel like that's what it is. Someone, whoever's being watched is like that. Whoever's being watched is, is this really 
I don't know if she's high vibrational yet. Maybe she, no, she is because she's got this star card behind her. But she's someone who's not going to accept less than what she deserves and what she's worth. And what impresses her is, is all the right things. And maybe that's why this other person wants to lock it down. Maybe that's why. Are we done with this deck? Is that what this means? That was really fast. We can't possibly be done with this deck yet. Yeah, I... Okay. We have... Ooh. Wow. We have the Ten of Cups and the Moon coming out together. Wow. There is going to be something being revealed. And there is this full moon um, tomorrow. So I think this person, whoever is watching this queen, might be ready to come forward. The moon... Okay, first of all, look at these. Look at the moon. Look at the moon. They're like just suckling. Suckling. Okay? And the feminines are just like, you know, like laid back, laying back in the, and enjoying it, like receiving, right? And then in the Ten of Cups, She's also in a, in a position of voluptuous comfort. This is a woman who doesn't need anybody for nothing. Like she would, I mean, not, I don't even want to push that so much any harder because I think that Queen of Swords really laid it out pretty simply. This is, um, this Ten of Cups, the Ten of Chalices is the perfect happiness card. That did come up in la the last reading, I think. Yeah, it did. It's the picture taking one where the, you know, that's where I just, anyway. So he's walking away from her, but he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to leave this perfect goddess, you know? It's like, oh, I got to go to work now. Oh, I don't want to leave you. I just want to stay in bed and suckle on you like all day. You know, it's like once they get together and once this all and you know the moon is is traditionally either very very creative or emotional chaos you know okay so but it's also something being brought to light being brought to the surface being kind of exposed but in a very tumultuous way like the sun is an exposure the moon is an exposure but the moon is more like a big reveal like a big dramatic reveal Okie dokie. So this Ten of Chalices. Attachment. See? The attachment between partners orients the relationship towards continuity and is necessary to form a happy family. So these people are going to be very attached to each other once they get together. See, he's already attached. He's already attached to her in the 5D. Ooh. He's already attached to her in the 5D, and this just hasn't happened like in the 3D yet. Ooh, oh my God. But when they do their physical bodies unite, they're going to be very attached. <laughs> I'm so immature. My astrologer would tell me that she goes, Natalie, you're very wise, but so immature. Yeah, he has a hard time leaving her for work. You know what I thought about? I keep seeing this image the past like less than a week. I keep seeing Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. And I keep seeing this quote or this interview or this thing that um, Lauren said, Lauren Bacall, when she talked about how Bogie just always wanted her by his side. He always just like wanted her close by and they just like lived this happy little life together, right? For the time that they had but that's what this is this is that attachment that you know and you know i always thought okay once upon a time i swore that i was going to marry like a rock star i swore that i was going to be someone's like 16th wife and that i was going to be with someone who traveled a lot and that i would be 
um, like there with them, but when they were out doing maybe like, you know, maybe like a politician or someone who tours or something like that. And then when they were doing that, I would be like writing my bomb ass screenplays and, you know, working off my laptop and like do my own thing and like, you know, whatever. I know old little, can you imagine little, you know, like little Natalie just dreaming of being like someone's 16th wife, third wife, sixth wife. See, low standards, low standards. Now, no, that's not really going to be me. Now I'm the, now I'm, now I'm her and you are too. See, this is, we've all started somewhere. No one's just born with everything. Okay. But this attachment is kind of like a scenario like that where they just really love to be together. And if it at all can work in their lives, they can, then that's what they want. Then if it can at all work out where they can just be together. Holy fuck, it might be. Because they work together. Remember the three of coins? And the queen of coins. The wheel of fortune can turn. And they could, that could be how they get together is through work. And then when they start working together, they become very attached. Wow. That's incredible. Wow. Okay, now let me get to the moon. If it does, can, I feel like now it's connecting. I feel like this is the other side of the general reading now because it, it was like work. That And the same card came up. Like they didn't, someone didn't see like potential in someone in a work situation. And now someone does see someone's potential in a romantic situation. And over there in the daily, in the weekend reading, the general, it had a little bit of a connotation, a little bit of a romantic vibe. And in the romantic reading, it has this little bit of a work vibe. I don't know. I feel like it's pretty two sides of the same coin here. Fancy, the spell of love. Maybe I'll title this the spell of love because this person is under a spell. Make no mistake about it. They and the 5D are completely locked in and inspired by this person completely. Com they might not even consciously know it. They might still be watching and waiting but that's going to filter down. I feel like they already filtered down into the manifestation level. I feel like it's going to happen like any second now for some of you. Whatever story this is that I'm channeling, whoever's watching this, whatever time they're watching it, it's going to be soon. Like I said, the next, the last reading was in 10 days. I think this one's like in 10 days. Within 0 to 10 days. Any second to 10 days for sure. A slow but effective magic action based on the sound and evocation of happy images. It defeats deception and illusions, restoring serenity at home and increasing fecundity. A slow but effective magic action based on the sound and evocation of happy images. It defeats deception and illusions, restoring serenity at home and increasing fecundity. Wow, this couple overcame odds. This couple overcame major odds. Wow. And it's destined because we have this Wheel of Fortune. It's preordained. It's destined. At least, at least the two souls involved, before they incarnated, decided, look, I'm going to come get your ass if you're not where you're supposed to be. I'm going to come get your ass. I'm going to come get your ass if you're not where you're supposed to be. We have shit to do here. We have we have souls to, you know what I'm saying? We have shit to do here. So, yeah. Wow. But it's balanced. See, emotional chaos is that moon card. In the Tarot of Sexual Magic, it's balance being restored. This person brings you peace. They bring you balance. They bring you harmony. And so this attachment is not an unhealthy attachment. This attachment is life-affirming attachment. This attachment is 
is good for you. It's fecundity. It's, it gives you energy. It does not take energy from you. Okay. Very positive, very high, high evolved stuff here. Okay, I looked at the bottom of the deck. The Seven of Swords. Oh my God, this guy is so obsessed. He's so obsessed with you. This is hilarious. We have two Seven of Swords here. This is what it is. Oh my God. Oh my God. We have Seven of Swords in both decks coming out in this reading. Take a look at this image, everybody. Okay, do you see how she is just like, uh, uh, and he is like pale and he's has his back to her and he's like, oh, fuck. Holy fuck. It's like after they sleep together, he's fucked. He's like, oh my fucking God, I'm done. I'm fuck. She got me. It's so good. And it's beyond being so good. It's like the soul connection. It's like he's never had it like this before. It's completely different and thrilling and exhilarating. And she, it's just like another, not like it's not, I'm not diminishing it on her part. It's not like it's not meaningful to her or anything or not special or indifferent and all that. I'm just saying that she's just, she's not afraid of, of what it could mean or, you know, she's not really, she, it's the, it's the divine masculine. It's the masculine part of this that's like not resistant, but just seeing it for what it is. That's it. He's just seeing it for what it is. And when men come to that emotional part of, of, a, of a relationship where they see it for what it is, and they're like at the point where they're really ready to have, to make sexual magic with someone. See, it's like, whoa, like he's never felt like this before. Sex has never felt like this for him before. This could be someone who is used to having sex without emotions. This could be someone who is used to having sexual encounters that didn't mean anything. And, you know, it was okay with him. It was okay with the other party. There was consent on both sides. And he was really shortchanging himself this whole time. And I mean, that's just what it was, you know, no judgments or anything. But this union, this person just opens him up and just like, see, it's a reawakening. She's, she is bringing him to life and he is lost. To it. He's like completely like, oh my God, he has to surrender to it. He's surrendered to it, I believe. I really believe he's surrendered to it now. He's just like, oh my God, whoa. She's going to rock his world. I feel like he knows it. He's already possessive over her. He's already mentally claimed her as his own. He's waiting on something. I don't know what he's waiting for, but he's waiting. And it must be for a good reason. I guess. I don't know. But some of you are going to be getting it. You're going to be getting it. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the little bookie says. Tasting. Only the beginning is not enough, but it is a beginning. Not every seed can ripen in a day. This is why you must persevere. Damn. Damn. He wants it all. He wants it all. Like, it's like he wished that he did all this, like, before. So that he could be enjoying certain things now. It's kind of impatient, huh? It's like, damn, I just shot my shot in like two seconds. <laughs> it never happens to me or whatever. I don't know. But like, he's like, damn, this is just the beginning. And I have so much to look forward to. I'm... He's like, oh my God, I got to like pick up a book at Barnes and Noble or some shit. I need to like, she's okay. I have 54 minutes. Now we'll move on to the Decameron. Let's just get a little juicy. Little juicy. Do I have coffee tongue? Probably.
Ooh, whoa, did you see that? I hope you did. It did like this little, when it popped out. See, the camera was calling my name. <laughs> oh my God. With these two doing secret is fucked up. When I say fucked up, I mean kinky as fuck. The hermit. With these two doing secret, like together, when these two get together, it's their own world. They make, it's like they can play in their own little sandbox. Their own little sexual sandbox of ecstasy, okay? Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let's see what this book says. I know what this is going to say, but here, just listen to me. An attractive body troubles even an ascetic spirit. But don't be deceived by hypocrites and false virtue. Deception is lying in wait. This is what I'm saying. It's major temptation. It's major like physical temptation. It's like, thank goodness this is like a high vibe union and everything. This does not... The Hermit card is like just being alone, going up to the top of the mountain, thinking about your pain, transforming emotional pain into wisdom, coming back down from the mountain, sharing it with everybody else, coming to a conclusion. But here, they're trying to say like, oh, don't be deceived, you know, blah, 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 blah. But let me tell you what's really the download. The download is that in private, these two are their fullest expressions of like who they really are with each other. And it, that's what puts him at ease. That's what calms him down. She just brings calm to him. Remember, she's like the star. So I feel like these two are going to want a lot of alone time together. Wow, I think I see, I just see it. Bogey and Bacall, like the black and white images of them. I just see it. I see it so clearly. So these two are going to have like their own little world together in privacy. And they're going to do the dirty a lot. And then he's going to be like, oh, fuck. I am fucked. Once it slides in, once it's in, it's over. Ooh, I shouldn't name it that. Once it's in, it's over. This came out immediately. The King of Swords. Oh my God. Look at that. The King of Swords. So now we have both. We have the King of Swords and we have the Queen of Swords. Okay. Let me just rush right to this because it's kind of funny. Fondling. Love is made of strength. True love is capable of going beyond strength. There are different kinds of strength. He's very strong. He is a very strong individual. This masculine, very strong. And this is true love. And that, just like I just read, the true love... True love does go beyond strength. And these two have had to go beyond strength because something's telling me this is not just that he's super serious about this connection. He is, the hero friend is someone who would recognize the soulmates who is also matching the vibration of the queen of swords. Because remember, she's not settling for anything less than what she deserves. So now we have the counterpart. And he's matching her. He matches her now. Hmm, that's nice. I'll just pull a couple more. It's already 58 minutes for your love reading. Did I name this one already? I feel like I did. Now I have to watch it back. I should have written it down. Okay, that was too much. Let's see, I got distracted. Stand by. It's just that my table looks so nice right now with all of our cards on, on, on here. Jesus. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold on. I'm taking all of them and I'll tell you why in a minute. So here we go. We have the queen of chalices. The queen of chalices is true love. The queen of cups. She has the cup that is covered that she knows what's inside and nobody else knows what's inside. 
this is like the equal give and take of um, sexual favors. And these two are really great together. They just like they like they please each other very easily. They both come really fast together at the at the. <laughs> so embarrassing at the, the, at the same time oh my, god. oh my god okay okay Natalie here we go so when I want it over here there we go here we go the attachment between partners orients the relationship towards continuity I read that already. That was the Ten of Chalices. Hold on, sorry. Tenderness. A tender and gentle story brings you to the point of planning your future with serenity. Wow, I am very distracted. That was the wrong book completely. I've never done that before. That means something. These two have planning to do. This is like the logistical. I just saw it again. Bogey and Bacall with their, with their dogs. You have to incorporate each other. There's something about fitting into each other's life that deserves mentioning at least. Hmm. Com compromise success. An invitation to still fight. No, that's not it either. Oh my God, what's wrong with me? The Queen of Chalices... In the Decameron, here we go. An affectionate lover exchanges sexual favors with a companion, recognizing a partner's right to orgasm. Jeez, sorry guys. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. They exchange great sexual favors constantly. They both come every single time together. It's like that. It's like an explosive. That's why I'm telling you, I'm telling you, he shook up. He's never had it like this before. He's like... Next card, the death card. Who do you think that is? Time passes and we can't slow it down. It's best not to turn down joy for fear of something new or because of shyness. Let go of the past. I hope someone's not like, see they're watching and they're waiting and they, they need to just let that go. They just need to do it. They just need to like pick up the phone or whatever it is. But you know, time passes, you just can't let it go by. You can't you can't waste any time being shy. You can't waste any time, you know, being scared. You just have to do it. I love this card. Another ace, the ace of wands. Sexuality comes from nature, the beginning of a loving relationship to be enthusiastically continued. Oh my god, I feel like that's me. Mm. <laughs> it's somebody I can project into you guys you can you guys can live it up for me mm-hmm okay the ten of wands uncertainty in managing the relationship indiscretion tiredness this is just some stress coming up now the ten of wands is like burden you know a lot to take on I feel like they could just be overthinking the how and the why and, the, and it's just like burdening and then it like they talk themselves out you know but they want it and it's like a lot it's just like a lot going on this person has a lot going on in their life right now but let me tell you something there could never be the perfect time and that's what the death card is saying it could be it's saying that it, there could never be the bestest perfectest time so the perfect time is now that's what that means. There could always be a burden. There could always be something on there, going on. There could always be something else that needs your attention. And you know what? If you try to figure out the perfect way to incorporate them into your life, it'll never happen. You got to just do it. You just got to start. Once you begin, that's the complete completion of, a, of, the old, of the old cycle. You just have to start it. And then my favorite. Oh, it is the two of pentacles. Yeah, they're definitely figuring out how to incorporate you into their life. The Two of Pentacles. That's the one where the guy's juggling the Two of Pentacles in the traditional tarot deck. He's trying to figure out the nitty-gritty, the nuts and bolts, and the details of how to get you with him. 
or her, whatever. Voluptuous excitement, fun orgasm. So yeah, I mean, you both want to start orgasming as soon as humanly possible, but this is, it's like he's got a lot of burdens right now and he just wants to fuck you. He just wants to um, go into a room with you behind, you know, close the door and like relieve his stress. And you can totally do that. But seriously, it's, um, you know, he wants all of this and he, and there's like a, a very strong beginning here, very strong beginning, but it's like, he just needs to do it. He just needs to take the action and do it all. That's what all of this is coming down to is he just needs to do it. I think he's going to do it within the next 10 days. Death card. He, it, I think it's going to overwhelm him that, that fear of regret and losing more time. I think he's going to feel like the season's changing. And like I said, there's a lot going on, but there's always a lot going on. There could always be a lot going on. There's never going to be the perfect time. So the perfect time is now. Like right now, you know, you just got to like do it. But he's still weighing it out. He's still trying to figure out the perfect thing. He's the king of swords. So he's mental, just like the queen of swords. So just like her, he's going to want to think out everything, every possible, you know, he wants everything to be like really locked down and really perfect and really like set to go. And um, he just needs to figure out things like, you know, he's fucking attached to you in the 5D already. So he just has to figure out how to get you physically there. He just has to figure out how to physically get you by his physical side. That's what this is. He's like, okay, how am I going to communicate with her and tell her, how am I going to verbalize all this? The King of Swords is like, you know, he's got a, he's the intelligent king, very mental activity, but he has to figure out the communication style, like the style of communication. He has to figure out what's going to be said. He has to figure out, you know, what do I say in response to her different responses that she could have. This could be related to work. So it's like, okay, well, if, if we go back and talk to her about this work thing, or do I talk to her, tell her I love her first or like, Oh, I can't just tell her I love her. That sounds crazy. Or, you know, he's got like all this mental stuff going on and all he wants to do is lay in bed with you. <laughs> so funny. So he's got to figure out then like, okay, well, what's going on in her life? Is she able to like, I don't know, come and do whatever? You know, he has to ask himself that. He has to say, okay, well, you know, she's the queen of swords. She ain't going to move for shit. How do I make this good enough for her and what how do I put this package together that's going to make her follow along with what I want her to follow along with that sounds so bad but it, don't make a judgment on it that's just how he's thinking he's just thinking of how am I going to make this good enough for her and work for her life and how do I integrate her into my life and how do we live this life how do we get this whole thing started how do we you know do it how do we actually do it and honestly that's something that he needs to talk to her about and he's not, he's just being Mr. Scorpionic dude, just like watching her from afar and, and <laughs> trying to use street smart, you know, he's trying to use his street smarts about it. But what he's really got to do is like temper it with her. That's something that they got to do together and how, how, and all he wants to do, and he's, it's like, he's taking on the burden of doing it all himself right now. Like all the planning and all of the, all the big decisions. He's, he's totally taking on that burden on his own. And he's not, because he's watching her, he's not talking to her. He's not like planning it out with her. He's just being the king of swords. He's just being the controlling little hierophant, just like holding on to all of the everything. And he's not like deliberating with her about it. That's what's stressing him out. And that's why he's just kind of like, So she's able to bring him some kind of peace and serenity, even from afar, because she's inspiring him somehow. But yeah, they just need to um, talk. How simple, right? Like the king of swords, like the swords are just like overanalyzing to death, over, 
overthinking, overanalyzing, stressing out, staying up late at night, thinking about it. And, you know, that it's a burden that's showing up for him, for the masculine side, for the other side of all this. And all they really do is, is they just need to talk about it. Wow. I feel like the solution is so simple. He could, he could just like call her. I'm sure he could find her number. Page of Swords. Where is that card? Page of Swords. I'm sure they could find the number. I'm sure they can find the phone number. And I feel like it's got to be a, like a phone call. Unless it's this business thing. Then, he, then he's just got to organize the business offer. And then they will talk as business commences later. So it really just depends on if he wants to do the business. Lead with the business thing first. Or if he wants to lead with some other kind of intro into how he wants to approach her like oh hey you know my cousin bought stock with you I don't know my you know my friend invested in your startup and or whatever the hell it is or hey I I started going to the Starbucks because you work here or whatever it is you know whatever it is but it, it's got that's all that needs to happen I think once they do that then everything else will just fall into place He's just nervous about it. That's okay. Scorpio full moon. Things are going to come to light anyway. Things are going to be exposed and watch over the next 10 days. Okay, everyone, with this, I end my reading. Let me know how it goes. Let me know if anyone falls in love with someone they work with. Let me know if any of you get a promotion. Let me know if any of you fall in love with your boss. Let me know if any of you fall in love with your boss. Okay, everyone, take care. We'll talk soon. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know how it goes in the comments below. And I'll talk to you next time, probably Sunday or Monday, okay? Okay, bye. So this has been happening where I do my reading and then I'm kind of putting everything back together. And then I look at the bottom of the deck and I see a bottom of the deck card that I neglected to talk about in the reading. So the bottom of the deck card for the Decameron Tarot deck is the Lovers. Oh my God. I d and I haven't been going back to talk about it. And I haven't been going back to talk about it. And I'm sorry. I have to this time because it's just too important for this like special intimate love reading, you know, that you got the lovers at the bottom of the tarot deck. So I have to go back and I have to tell you what it means and what it is. If you have the joy of winning the favor of a young woman or man, don't be reticent, but rather offer real proof of your passion. So this is just going to further affirm and support what I said earlier about not being reticent and not being afraid to just pick up the phone and call them and to, you know, if this person, I put all those other cards away, but if they're the Hierophant and they're so sure that this is it, this is the one, they look at them and they think you it's really you and they're holding on to that in the the 5d then you have this person has to have faith that once they pick up the phone on the other end hello speaking oh thank you you know, whatever they have to, they have to get there. They have to like get, you cannot be reticent. Don't be reticent. If it's truly ordained, if it's truly soulmate, if it's truly meant to all of that, then doesn't it make sense that they're going to pick up the phone and that it'll be fine? Doesn't it? Doesn't it make sense? And that's what this card is telling you. The lover's card. Ooh, that's creepy. Some freakos watching them in the back. Ooh. What was scarier, that guy or that face I just made? Ooh. <laughs> are, you, are you so tired of me yet? I'm just kidding. So, but for real. So this is another sign from the universe, from the cosmos being channeled through me to tell you that if you're on the other end of all this pick up the phone and call this person 
don't be reticent. If you have the favor, if you have the great luck of winning the favor of a young man or a young woman, do it. Like that, this supports the death card because, oh, you got a couple death cards. Oh, this could be very Scorpionic. Scorpio involved or just the Scorpio full moon or Scorpio energy is coming up here. Something being, that could be this whole thing. It could be being some, you know, bringing this feeling to light and that being exposed to the person that needs to like hear it and know it. Okay. So don't be reticent. Just do it. If they're your soulmate, it'll all be fine. Okay. Do a practice run. So if it were me, hello. Hi. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't say hi like that, but I answer the phone like, hello. Or I'll try to be funny. Well, what else? Oh, sometimes if I'm being funny, I'll go, operator. You know, like the Matrix. Operator. <laughs> That's just me. But you have to, like, get over being reticent about something. So... You know, that's that's what this is. It's the lover's card. It's a soulmate. It's your soulmate. They will recognize, they will re feel your energy on the other line. So just do it. Just do it. Just do it. All right, I'm getting goofy. I'm getting goofy. I gotta go do my squats. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this reading and I will talk to you later. Okay, bye.